Hi, good morning, Miss Weeding's class. Hello, hi. I am so happy and excited to do story time for you today. My name is Miss Erica. I work at the big library, the Manaqua Public Library. Maybe some of you have come to the library before and seen me working at the library. Um, it's a place where you can come with your moms and dads and check out lots of different books and take them home with you. We usually have toys, but we don't have toys right now. Um, hopefully we can get the toys back soon though. We have some computers for kids to play on and we have all kinds of fun activities here. So if you've never visited the big library before, um, ask your mom or dad to bring you here so you can come visit me. Um, but I'm going to share some of my stories with you today and we're gonna talk a little bit about art. So my story time is about art and art can be lots of different things, but today we're kind of kind of focus on drawing a little bit. And I have some stories about drawing and some other activities that I'd like to share with you. Um, but before we do that, I'd like to sing good morning to you. And um, maybe you'll hear your name if you listen very closely. So we, when we sing good morning, we put our hands together and we clap. So you can go ahead and clap along with me. And we're going to sing good morning. So Ready? Here we go. It goes like this. And we're going to start with Ben. So, hello. Good morning, Ben. So, it goes like this. Good morning, Ben. Good morning, Ben. Good morning, Ben. We're glad you're here today. So, it's pretty easy. So, I'm going to now give a little shout out to my friend Kanan. Hi, Kanan. So, let's sing to Kanan. Ready? Put your hands together and clap. Good morning, Canaan. Good morning, Canaan. Good morning, Canaan. We're glad you're here today. And next is my friend, Connor. Hello, good morning, Connor. <laughs> All right, let's clap for Connor. Good morning, Connor. Good morning, Connor. Good morning, Connor. We're glad you're here today. And now I think Miss Weeding has someone in her class named Easton. Hello, good morning, Easton. <laughs> I'm glad to meet you, meet you. <laughs> Put your hands together, ready, here we go. Good morning, Easton, good morning, Easton, good morning, Easton, we're glad you're here today. And next up is Henry. Good morning, Henry, hi Henry. Well, let's sing to Henry. Put your hands together. Good morning, Henry, good morning, Henry. Good morning, Henry, we're glad you're here today. And I have a student in Miss Weeding's class named Naomi. Good morning, Naomi. So I know Miss Weeding has someone named Naomi in her class. Let's sing to her. Ready? Good morning, Naomi. Good morning, Naomi. Good morning, Naomi. We're glad you're here today. And the very last student Miss Weeding told me about, and I'd like to meet and introduce myself to, is Scarlett. So let's put our hands together for Scarlett. Good morning, Scarlet. Good morning, Scarlet. Good morning, Scarlet. We're glad you're here today. So hello, good morning, Miss Weeding's class. Good morning, Ben, Kaden, Connor, Easton, Henry, Naomi, and Scarlet. I'm so glad to finally meet you, and I'm really happy that you can at least see me virtually. Normally, I'd come visit you at your class, but things are a little bit different this year. So I'm just going to um, do a little rearranging here for a second. And I told you my story time today is about art. So we're gonna talk about some different types of art, um, or different types of art, art supplies that you use for drawing. And I have been starting out my story times this year with my mystery box. So here's my mystery box. And what a mystery box is, it's a box and I have a different surprise item in here every time I do story time and I'm gonna give you hints and clues and you have to try to figure out what's inside so I'm gonna give you three clues and if you have a guess maybe you can raise your hand and tell Miss Weeding so the first clue is this is something you use to color a picture with so you use it to color a picture all right, the second clue is sometimes this can be a little bit smelly, maybe a good smell or a bad smell, but it sometimes is smelly. So 
It's something you color a picture with, and sometimes it's a little bit smelly. And the third clue is, this is something you can use to draw on a dry erase board like this. You can use it to draw on a board, a dry erase board. So, it's something you use to color with. It's something that sometimes is a little bit smelly. And it's something you can use to color on a dry erase board. So, if you think you know what's inside of here, raise your hand and tell Miss Weeding. I'll give you a couple seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Guess. All right. All the guesses are in now, so let's find out what is inside. Ready? I'm going to open up. Here we go. I'm opening it up. And inside the box is a... Did you guess a marker? If you did, you're right. Good job. It's a marker, and it's my favorite color marker, too. My favorite color is pink. So if you want, maybe Miss Weeding could pause the video here, and you can share your favorite colors. So... My favorite color is pink. Maybe your favorite color is pink too. <laughs> Maybe not, that's okay too. So, the next thing I have for you is actually over here, I have another dry erase board. Whoop. Right over here. See this one? And I have a marker. This is a dry erase marker. So maybe you use these at school, I'm not sure. But I have a story I'm gonna tell you. And um, <clears throat> as I do this story, I'm going to draw on the dry erase board. And as I'm drawing, you can maybe guess what picture I'm drawing. So, <clears throat> it goes like this. It's called Wiggly Wiggins. So, Wiggly Wiggins is the main character that I might be drawing. Maybe, maybe you're learning about what a character is. So, um, if not, I bet Miss Weeding could explain it to you, what it, a character is. So, Wiggly Wiggins is my character in this story, and he lives in a little hole in the ground right here. A little hole. So he lives in a very beautiful garden, his little hole. It's filled with lovely flowers and delicious vegetables. One morning, Wiggly Wiggins, Wiggins gives a big yawn and starts out on his morning walk. He wiggles out of his little home like this. Ready? Actually, I'm going to do it a little bit deeper like that. So he wiggles out of his home, and he wiggles along a path under the vegetables and the flowers. He wiggles past the carrots like this. Then he wiggles past the beets, like this. Whoop. <laughs> Wiggly Wiggins gobbles down a large mouthful of dirt right here. Here he goes. Mmm, yummy. Oh my, he says to himself, was that delicious. Earth is the only thing that Wiggly Wiggins eats. And you'll find out why. So Wiggly Wiggins wiggles past petunias like this. Then he wiggles past tulips like this. Then he peeks in the flowers and he thinks they're quite beautiful and colorful. While Wiggly Wiggins was peeking at the flowers, a robin high up in the tree was peeking at Wiggly Wiggins. The robin thought Wiggly Wiggins would make a delicious breakfast. Quickly, he swooped down to get poor Wiggly Wiggins. But Wiggly Wiggins was a very fast wiggler. And he quickly burrowed down into the ground and back into his little hole like this. Back into his little hole. So Wiggly Wiggins was quite thankful he was the best wiggler in all the world. Does anyone have a guess what they think Wiggly Wiggins is? So some of the clues in the story were that he eats earth, he eats dirt or earth. Um, robins or birds like to eat him and he's a really fast wiggler 
and lives in a hole in the ground. So, Wiggly Wiggins is an earthworm. He's a worm. All right, I'm going to put some things away real quick here. And I'm going to get myself situated because this is a good way to lead up to my very first story. So, Wiggly Wiggins is a worm, and my very first story is about worms. Worms. So, I'm just going to get a little adjusted here. Okay, so this is called I Can Only Draw Worms, because you can see there's a worm on the cover. It's by Will Mabbitt. That's the author. And the publisher of this book, which means the person who, or the company that made this book, is called Penguin Random House, and I'm reading this story with their permission today. So this is called I Can Only Draw Worms. This book is about worms. I can only draw worms. <laughs> Here's worm one. Here's worm two. Here they are both together. It's hard to tell which is which. I'll give the second worm glasses. <laughs> That's better. Now you can tell them apart. Here's worm three. She's a different color. No reason. I just lost my pen. So the artist of this book is using different colored pens for his art. Hello, worm four. Worm four thinks he's in charge of all the other worms. I don't know why. Here's worm five. She's a little sick, I'm afraid. Sick worms look just like normal worms. The next page is really exciting. Worm six is riding on a flying unicorn. Just kidding, I can't draw flying unicorns. I've only drawn worm five again instead. <laughs> worm six flies his unicorn all the way to meet worm seven who lives in outer space. On the way, worm six has an amazing adventure. <laughs> we'll skip all that. Here's a picture of him meeting worm seven. He looks all cool, but inside he's really excited. <laughs> Oh dear, there's been a dreadful accident. Oh no. No worms on these pages. It's not true that if a worm is cut in half, it makes two worms. It makes two half worms. <laughs> here's worm eight, and here's worm eight and a half. This page is blank. Worm nine is missing. And the others are starting to get worried. Oh no, here they are. They're all looking for him. Here's worm 10 instead, the last worm. She looks the same as worm one. Oh, wait, it is worm one. <laughs> Here's worm 10, late as usual. And look who he's found, worm nine. She had just gone to the bathroom, sorry. That's okay, Worm 9. Everybody has to go sometimes. So now that's... Let's count them. Can you help me count them? Ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 and a half, 9, and 10. 10 worms, all friends together. This book was about worms because I can only draw worms. <laughs> and that's the end. So, I drew a worm, and then I read a book all about drawing worms. I have one song for you quick, and then one more story. This one right here behind me, before we end story time today. So, I've already talked about you can use markers for art. And we saw in this book, you can use different colored pens for art. And then in this story, Harold is going to use a purple crayon for his art. So you can use all different types of things to make art and to do drawing and coloring. So my song is about different art supplies and it is like the song Wheels on the Bus 
but we're just going to change the words a little bit. So if you wanted to stand up on the rug and do the motions along with me, I'm going to stay sitting just because it's a little easier with the space that I have right here. But we're going to pretend to use different types of um, art materials. So the first one is a paintbrush. And you hold a paintbrush kind of like this. And you kind of swish, swish, swish your paintbrush. So we're going to do that motion when we sing. So it goes like this. The paintbrush on the paper goes swish, 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 swish. The paintbrush on the paper goes swish, swish, swish all through the town. So we just painted some nice, smooth, graceful strokes. Now we're going to use a pencil. So a pencil you kind of grip with your two fingers like this. And it kind of makes like a scritch, scritch, scratch. So we're going to kind of go up and down and scritch and scratch and scritch and scratch on our paper. The pencil on the paper goes scritch, scritch, scratch, scritch, scritch, scratch, scritch, scritch, scratch. The pencil on the paper goes scritch, scritch, scratch all through the town. So the next is what Harold uses, which is a crayon. And you can kind of grip a crayon like this and really really scribble with it, really scribble hard and get some nice good marks on your paper. So we're going to scribble, scribble with our crayon. The crayon on the paper goes scribble, 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 scribble. The crayon on the paper goes scribble, scribble, scribble all through the town. And another thing you can do in art is use Play-Doh or clay and you can kind of mold different characters and different shapes. So we're going to use Play-Doh and we're going to squish it and we're going to mold it like clay. So kind of move your fingers or your hands like this and kind of squish and squish like that. The Play-Doh on the table goes squish, 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 squish. The Play-Doh on the table goes squish, squish, squish all through the town. And the very last thing, the thing that was in my mystery box, do you remember what that was? It's something you use on the dry erase board. Remember, I made my worm using one of these. It's a marker. And markers you hold kind of like this again. And they kind of make a squeak, squeak, squeak noise. And you kind of do sharp movements like this with them sometimes. So we're going to go squeak, squeak, squeak. The marker on the paper goes squeak, 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 squeak. The marker on the paper goes squeak, squeak, squeak all through the town. All right, that's all I have for um, the art supply song. I have one more story, and this is a story that I really liked when I was a kid. It's kind of a really fun story because he uses his imagination a lot, and he gets himself out of trouble, and he creates um, new fun things for himself. So let's see what he does in this story of Harold and the Purple Crayon. This is written by Crockett Johnson. And I am reading it today with permission from HarperCollins Publishers. So they're the ones that made this book. All right, here's Harold in his purple crayon. One evening, after thinking it over for some time, Harold decided to go for a walk in the moonlight. There wasn't any moon, and Harold needed a moon to go for a walk in the moonlight. There it is. So he decided... Uh, and he decided he needs something to walk on. There it is. <laughs> he made a long, straight path so he wouldn't get lost. And he set off on his walk, taking his big purple crayon with him. But he didn't seem to be getting anywhere on the long, straight path. So he left the path for a shortcut across the field. And the moon went with him. There's the moon. The shortcut led right to where Harold thought a forest ought to be. He didn't want to get lost in the woods, so he made a very small forest with just one tree in it. It turned out to be an apple tree. The trees or the apples wouldn't be the apples would be very tasty, Harold thought, when they got red. So he put a frightening dragon under the tree to guard the apples. There was a terribly frightening dragon with lots of sharp teeth. It even frightened Harold. He backed away 
and his hand holding the purple crane shook. <sighs> Suddenly he realized what was happening, but by then Harold was over his head in the ocean. Oh no. He quickly, he came up thinking fast. In no time he was climbing aboard a little boat. He quickly set sail, and the moon sailed along with him. <laughs> After he had sailed long enough, Harold made land without much trouble. He stepped ashore on the beach, wondering where he was. The sandy beach reminded Harold of picnics, and the thought of picnics made him hungry. So he laid out a nice, simple picnic lunch. There was nothing but pie, but there were all nine kinds of pie that Harold liked best. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Look at all that pie. That looks like a yummy picnic to me. When Harold finished his picnic, there was quite a lot left. He hated to see so much delicious pie go to waste. So what's he making? What do you think? Any guesses? Harold left a very hungry moose and a deserving porcupine to finish it all up. And off he went, looking for a hill to climb to see where he was. <laughs> Harold knew that the higher up he went, the farther he could see, so he decided to make the hill into a mountain. If he went high enough, he thought, he could see the window of his bedroom. He was tired and he felt he ought to be getting to bed. He hoped he could see his bedroom window from the top of the mountain. But as he looked down over the other side, he slipped. Oh no, then there wasn't any other side of the mountain. He was falling in thin air. But luckily he kept his wits and his purple crayon. He made a balloon and he grabbed onto it. And he made a basket under the balloon big enough to stand in. He had a fine view from the balloon, but he couldn't see his window. He couldn't even see a house. So he made a house with windows and he landed the balloon on the grass in the front yard. None of the windows was his window he tried to think where his window ought to be. He made some more windows. He made a big building full of windows. He made lots of buildings full of windows. He made a whole city full of windows. But none of the windows was his window. He couldn't think where it might be. decided to ask a policeman. There's the policeman. The policeman pointed the way Harold was going anyway, but Harold thanked him. <laughs> and he walked along with the moon, wishing he was in his room and in his bed. Then suddenly, Harold remembered. He remembered where his bedroom window was. When there was a moon, it was always right around the moon. And then Harold made his bed. He actually drew it, didn't he? And he got in and he drew up the covers. <laughs> the purple crayon dropped on the floor and Harold dropped off to sleep. What a long, exciting day and a long, exciting adventure. That's the end of Harold and the Purple Crayon. And that is the end of story time. So goodbye, everyone. It was so nice to meet you. I hope I can meet you in person someday, but at least you can see me on the screen. And um, I'm going to say goodbye to everyone again. So goodbye, Miss Weeding's class. And I hope that you had fun watching my story time. And I will see you next time, maybe in about a month. We'll see. All right. Bye.